right, this is Amy Blanford, everybody. Um, Amy Blanford is a kinesiology department instructor with Missouri State University, an author, and owner of the Blanford Investment Group, and chair of the Drew Lewis Foundation. And she's doing some incredible things in our community, so I'm really glad that she's here tonight. TED Talk series, or we're supposed to be. There's turn it off. And uh, you're supposed to not use a microphone. Um, to tell the story in eight minutes that I've been telling over the last three years would not happen. So I had to put it down on paper to um, to get it out in eight minutes, maybe ten. Um, but also because it's the first time I'm telling the story differently than I've told it in the last three years. Um, and so we'll see how it goes tonight. Um, so my story begins actually with about an eight-year-old. Um, it was a late evening, and the memory is something convoluted because it's an eight-year-old, and so it's probably exaggerated slightly. But it's the middle of the night. Um, a woman is has no funds. She has two children, not in car seats, in the back of her car. And she does possibly the unthinkable for most of us. She pulls up to a gas station. She fills her tank and she runs. The police catch her, catch up to her, and she ends up being arrested. The two children are put into custody. They have no shoes on. They're hungry, they're dirty, they are scared. They've been pulled away from their mother, so they are crying. They're placed in a home, in a foreign bed, and they cling to each other the first night on their own. Most likely your heart hurts for those children. And if it doesn't, it should. It's not their fault. It's not a situation they ask for. But what emotions do you have for the mother who put them in that situation? Perhaps she's unfit. Perhaps uncaring. You have an image in your mind of who she is. What does someone in poverty look like? How do they behave? And it's probably different than the choices that you would make. This is how I grew up. Not as a child in the car. My parents are here, so this makes it so hard. But as a child in a home, that eight-year-old who remembers two children coming without shoes on. So this is why I wrote it down, to get through it today. My biological parents are saints. They were foster parents, and they chose something miraculous. They chose to teach their children, me, my six siblings, seven adopted, to live and understand generosity. They imprinted that and the desire to create a safe place for others, no matter where they came from or how they entered my life. My, my parents chose to raise me with social awareness, the greatest gift they could have given. They cared for over 150 children in 40 years of foster care. Although I didn't appreciate it at the time, I was a young, impressionable child. The Fairbanks formula was being created in me. I watched my parents create personal relationships, not just with the children that came into our home, but with the parents and the families of those children. They went above and beyond the normal social system of foster care, and they created relationships, and they created a place where families could find safety. Today I'm going to talk to you about the Fairbanks formula and what's happening here in Springfield. How a young, socially aware child was moved to follow in the footsteps of her parents and create a place for others. In 2007, I moved into the Grant Beach neighborhood. I'd gone through a difficult part in my own, a time in my own life, and I chose somehow that, um, actually it's 
or my father, the uh, jack of all trades, um, that I chose to remodel an old house in a historic part of Springfield as my therapy. So I moved to Grant Beach, and I created a relationship within that neighborhood. If you don't know Grant Beach, um, right now there's the Zone 1 Blitz, and it is red in most of the areas that you will see in that map. I lived in Grant Beach for over a year, and I created community with my neighbors, the same neighbors that have those hot red zones, and the same reason that people choose not to live in that neighborhood. And I quickly grew to love that part of town. Although a romantic relationship moved me out of um, that neighborhood, it still stayed a big part of my heart. I still own the house, and for years I've watched the neighborhood. But most importantly, for six years, I watched the Fairbanks Elementary School. Three years ago, my husband and I actually purchased the Fairbanks, and that used to be the biggest part of my story, and tonight it changes. The Fairbanks was a damaged shell of the amazing school that it had been. It had been closed down due to all the problems, asbestos being one of them, which you learned about this evening. We wanted to save the old building. We wanted to save a part of history, a part of Springfield. We wanted to save a part of a neighborhood, and we wanted to change the well-being of that neighborhood. All of the areas and weaknesses of this 100-year-old building were enough for the three or two developers prior to me to feel that it was best to tear it down, take all of its problems, create a pile of rubble, and begin with something new. It was thought that it would be much easier to simply destroy than to deal with the problems. The building was a reflection of Grant Beach as well. Poverty, crime, and neglect were on the rise in Grant Beach. Much like my parents' relationship with foster care system, instead of seeing destruction, what I focused on was building relationships and seeing the supportive community, the possibility for something different, and the Fairbanks formula does that by empowering lives. The Fairbanks formula is based on what, what my parents taught me about compassion for others. It is based on social awareness. I am driven by the belief that I can improve just one life, and that is enough for me. The formula is based on community-driven development. It encouraged others to find their passion and to make a difference in our community. The Drew Lewis Foundation at the Fairbanks is where the momentum lies. This project has momentum to make a difference in Northwest Springfield, a part of the Zone 1 Blitz, a part of the Northwest Project. And it happens as a result of a number of individuals showing up with passion and having the courage to empower others. Why? I've been asked, if you saw the Fairbanks and the pictures of it, you would understand why I was crazy enough to purchase the building. But our, comu our, comu our community right now has an amazing passion for change. It has a passion to create relationships, and it has a passion to make a difference in the lives of those less fortunate. It has been challenging, but it has been way more rewarding. Even in the times of tragedy, life will bring some of the most amazing gifts if you are ready, willing, and aware of the possibility. Awareness begins with the understanding of emotion, especially being open to the emotion of others around you. Do you understand their true need and their personal concerns? Social awareness is exemplified through our service to others. Service is the ability, again, to understand what it is that the needs of your neighbors, your family, or your friends may have. But more importantly in Springfield right now, social awareness is knowing what those who you may not know need most and serving in ways that answer that need. Awareness of social situations means you carefully consider what people need and you communicate at their level and address based on their need, not what you think is your need. It should be a natural position for all of us to be socially aware and to reach out to others. It includes compassion and it includes care. Research reported in Scientific America, however, suggests that our ability to understand the feelings of others has actually decreased over the last 30 years, and our first presentation discussed that. 
Is it an increase because of the social isolation theory with our ability to communicate nonstop, but the quality of communication is much less? Probably. It creates isolation. But isolation and poverty is more extreme than what we know in middle and upper class. The trouble is, it creates loss of empathy. And without empathy, we do not have understanding of the needs of others. There is a significant loss of trust. And without empathy and trust, we do not create relationships and we lose our community. Understanding equals trust. More importantly though, when you respond to the needs of others, it's that simple to regain trust. One of my favorite co quotes, could a greater miracle take place than for us to look through each other's eyes for an instant? What would you do if you had the time to understand someone in poverty? How would you feel the experience of their hardships, their true emotions, not having the ability to provide for their children, to know that there isn't enough food, gas, or money to make it through just one more day. This is what's happening in 25% of the average population in Springfield, but 43% of the population in Grant Beach and other neighborhoods in Zone 1 here in Springfield. Think back to the story of the brief story I told you of the mother. She had her children torn away from her by simply trying to meet a basic need. Was it a crime? but can your perspective change? Empathy is really about acknowledging the emotions of others, being thoughtful and considerate of their feelings, and making decisions based on those considerations. I challenge you to first seek to understand, and then you can be understood. As we improve social awareness, we also improve our experience in life. We create opportunities that better life, that create better life balances for each of us. We become aware of others' emotions, and we improve the ability to respond to change. How do we address poverty at the Fairbanks, through our Fairbanks formula? We challenge you, every member of Springfield and the surrounding community, to step outside of your comfort zone and to experience an unfamiliar culture. Whether you venture out to a different side of town or you volunteer for those in need, exposing yourself to diverse, diverse cultures and ways of life will expand your way of thinking and seeing the world and allow you to be part of the change. Being exposed to different systems, especially in Springfield, different social classes, our lifestyles become useful, or their lifestyles become useful for you to understand and accept a different viewpoint. We must be careful in our privilege. Say that again. We must be careful in our privilege. We must be socially aware. You must cross the tracks and you must experience different cultures and come from different viewpoints to have understanding. The Fairbanks School is being refurbished to provide a community hub. It provides services for many families in need, but it provides services in reciprocity for those who are willing to get involved and give back. Like that mother, many of the families that we deal with are facing adversity and they are in crisis mode. They need the world to stop spinning for just a minute so they can grasp a hold and take that first step forward to move out of poverty. Simple things that you and I take for granted. Toothbrush, children in the school system steal toilet paper to make sure they have it at home. A warm shower, clean clothes. Many of these items are luxuries for the families we serve. The Drew Lewis Foundation at the Fairbanks has created a community hub in an area that often has suffering and the greatest disparities in Springfield. It's not a neighborhood of lazy people. Some of the hardest working people that we have ever seen. They're doing the best they can with what they know how to do to survive today. Each week, each week we work with families in the neighborhood. 
We address the issues and concerns of the family while also addressing the social economic well-being of the neighborhood that surrounds them. What we don't want to create is individuals that move out of poverty and become North Nixons. Move out of neighborhood? Right. <laughs> not one mass exodus to the south side. Our goal is to help create a sustainable neighborhood that actually grows with the families, creates a sustainable environment, so should they slip and fall, they have a hub, a place to return. Through the Northwest Project, we focus on three main areas human, financial, and social needs of our families. Springfield is very program rich. We have more people working in nonprofits and service oriented industries than any other. What the Fairbanks formula does is it brings together over 20 agencies and the services they provide, and it puts it into the safety and the area of trust in the middle of the neighborhood in the families that are being served. We focus on commonalities of everyone, the value of each person, and we bring those together to find the common good and the improvement in the community as a whole. Just because someone is different does not mean that they do not add value to your life or to our community. The mother that you perhaps judged at the beginning of my story, I wonder at what point in life did we decide that any human has any less value than another? Especially in the face of poverty, we become uncomfortable when the people in the room around us do not look like us as a result of poverty. No one checks a box that says, yes, keep me in poverty. That's where I want to be today. I challenge each of you to always cross the tracks, to seek first to understand before you judge, and also before you're able to understand. The Fairbanks formula is simple. I am not waving madly, and this fly is really messing up the dramatic ending. <laughs> the Fairbanks formula is simple. It creates trust. It is using a collective impact from everyone in our community, and it only works when the entire community works together to lift each other up. We work and motivate through emotion and feeling. We foster community where it was once lost. We do not judge the parents in crisis. Each of us would probably do the same, given the same circumstances, when it meant protecting our children. The Fairbanks formula supports organizational capacity and sustainability. So what I challenge each of you, step outside of your comfort zone. Come across the tracks. Come join and serve our community. And come be socially aware of your community through the projects like the Northwest Project and the Zone 1 Blitz in the Northwest Quadrant of Springfield, Missouri. Thank you.